A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In Babylon, there lived a man named Joachim, who married a very beautiful and God-fearing woman, Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah. Her pious parents had trained their daughter according to the law of Moses. Joachim was very rich. He had a garden near his house, and the Jews had recourse to him often because he was the most respected of them all. That year, two elders of the people were appointed judges of whom the Lord said, Wickedness has come out of Babylon from the elders who were to govern the people as judges. These men, to whom all brought their cases, frequented the house of Joachim. When the people left at noon, Susanna used to enter her husband's garden for a walk. When the old men saw her enter every day for a walk, they began to lust for her. They suppressed their consciences. They would not allow their eyes to look to heaven, and they did not keep in mind just judgments. One day, while they were waiting for the right moment, she entered the garden as usual with two maids only. She decided to bathe, for the weather was warm. Nobody else was there except the two elders who had hidden themselves and were watching her. Bring me oil and soap, she said to the maids, and shut the garden doors while I bathe. As soon as the maids had left, the two old men got up and hurried up to her. Look, they said. The garden doors are shut and no one can see us. Give in to our desire and lie with us. If you refuse, we will testify against you that you will be dismissed. Your mates will be dismissed because a young man was here with you. I am completely trapped, Susanna groaned. If I yield, it will be my death. If I refuse, I cannot escape your power. Yet it is better for me to fall into your power without guilt than to sin before the Lord. Then Susanna shrieked, and the old men also shouted at her. As one of them ran to open the garden doors, when the people in the house heard the cries from the garden, they rushed in by the side gate to see what had happened to her. As the accusations by the old men, the servants felt very much ashamed, for never had any such thing happened or been said about Susanna. When the people came to her husband Joachim the next day, the two wicked elders also came fully determined to push Susanna to death. Before all the people, they ordered, send for Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah, the wife of Joachim. When she was sent for, she came with her parents, children, and all her relatives. All her relatives and the onlookers were weeping. In the midst of the people, the two elders rose up and laid their hands on her head. Through tears, she looked up to heaven, for she trusted in the Lord wholeheartedly. The elders made these accusations. As we were walking in the garden alone, this woman entered with two girls and shut the doors of the garden, dismissing the girls. A young man who was hidden there came and lay with her. When we, in a corner of the garden, saw this crime, we ran toward them. We saw them lying together, but the man we could not hold because he was stronger than we. He opened the doors and ran off. Then we seized her and asked her 
who the young man was, but she refused to tell us. We testified to this. The assembly believed them since they were elders and judges of the people, and they condemned her to death. But Susanna cried aloud, Oh, eternal God, you know what is hidden and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that they have testified falsely against me. Here I am about to die, though I have done none of these, which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard a prayer. As she was being led to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young boy named Daniel, and he cried aloud. I will have no part in the death of this woman. All the people turned and asked him, What is this you are saying? He shouted in their midst and continued, Are you such fools, O children of Israel, to condemn a woman of Israel without examination and without clear evidence? Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste. To Daniel, the eldest said, Come, sit with us and inform us, since God has given you the prestige of old age. But he replied, Separate these two far from each other that I may examine them. After they were separated from one another, he called one of them and said, how have you grown evil with age? Now have your past sins come to term, passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent, and freeing the guilty. Although the Lord says, the innocent and the just you shall not put to death. Now then, if you were a witness, tell me under what tree you saw them together. Under a mastic tree, he answered. Daniel replied, Your fine lie has cost you your head, for the angel of God shall receive the sentence from him and split you in two. Putting him to one side, he ordered the other one to be brought. Daniel said to him, Offspring of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you. Last has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel, and in their fear they yielded to you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me under what tree you surprised them together. Under an oak, he said. Daniel replied, Your fine lie has cost you also your head. For the angel of God waits with a sword to cut you in two so as to make an end of you both. The whole assembly cried aloud, Blessing God who saves those who hope in him. Those who rose up against the two elders, for by their own words Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they inflicted on them the penalty that they had plotted to impose on their neighbor, they put them to death. Thus was innocent blood spared that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In vendant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. 
Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Even Even though though I walk walk in the the dark dark valley, valley, I I fear fear no evil, for you are at my side. Glory and praise to you. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked man, says the Lord, but rather in his conversion that he may live. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, Lord. Jesus spoke to, to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So the Pharisees said to him, You testify on your own behalf, so your testimony cannot be verified. Jesus answered and said to them, Even if I do testify on my own behalf, my testimony can be verified because I know where I came from and where I am going. But you do not know where I come from or where I'm going. You judge by appearances But I do not judge anyone, and even if I should judge, my judgment is valid, because I am not alone, but it is I and the Father who sent me. Even in your own law, it is written that a testimony of two men can be verified. I testify on my behalf, and so does the Father who sent me. So they said to him, Where is your father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would know my father also. He spoke these words while teaching in the treasury in the temple area, but no one arrested him because his hour had not yet come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, the Monday of the fifth week of Lent is always interesting because the first reading is this reading that we just heard. So you pay attention. Next year, it's going to be the same reading, a very long reading about a woman who was falsely accused. Yesterday, we heard about the woman caught in adultery. In her case, she was guilty. In the case of Susanna, she was not guilty. So what is the purpose? As we get closer, as we move closer to Good Friday, the church wants to prepare us by giving us stories that anticipate the story of Good Friday. And so in a way, Susanna in the story 
prefigures Jesus. She is a type of Jesus. She was accused innocently. She trusted in God, and God saved her. Similarly, Jesus would be falsely accused. In his case, though, he would go to the all, he would go to all the way to the end. He would die, but God will vindicate him and bring him back to life. This is the message that the church wants us to understand. Those who put their faith in God will always be vindicated. The journey will be long. The dark night of suffering will be long, but ultimately, the daylight of joy, the daylight of celebration will come. And so as we continue our Lenten discipline, let us remember that there is a God that we follow, the God who vindicated Susanna, the God who vindicated Jesus. Let us pray. Let us pray for our shepherds, our bishops and priests, as they prepare for Holy Week for their spiritual strength and favor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may never be eager to cast the first stone or to judge others in any way but remember our own sins and weaknesses and imitate the divine patience and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our hear our prayer. prayer. For all who are walking through a dark valley of illness, unemployment, addiction, or abuse, that they may feel the guidance of the Good Shepherd leading them to waters of rest and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Does Jesus, who would not condemn the woman caught in adultery, may forgive the sins of our faithful departed and free them from all suffering, bringing them into the light and joy of his kingdom? We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions, we hold the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, you saved Susanna because she trusted in you. We pray you to give us deep faith in you so that in all things we will obey you and submit to your will. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.